Uh, gotta love computer updates. Couldn't even s start at 7 if I tried. Oh well. So. This is gonna be a shorter one today because my throat is a little hoarse from yesterday, from streaming yes this game yesterday, so. We're gonna continue. We're trying to, currently we're trying to get back into the village. So we're basically went back to the very beginning of the game. And we are... So. So we're trying to infiltrate back into the, uh, into the, uh, city. Well, it's not working as well as we had hoped. So, let's go try another one. Why are we here? Yep. All right. Yeah, we got lost. Why not? Want a bike trip and lost my way. Just told him the truth. Nothing shade about that. Tell them some, some cheap lies would only make them suspicious. Really? Put on a threatening tone. Really wish you didn't stare at me like that. What do you expect me to fall for him? Really, I've been wandering around the mountains for hours before finding a convenience store. The employee told me about this place. Convenience store? They told you to come here? Yeah. She hadn't told me to go to Kamafuji Yoshi, but she told me about Yazumizu. I'd just tell them the truth until the end. She told me about something in the mountains that's not even on the map. Kindly refused what she told me about here. That's strange. Hmm. Is there a settlement like that? Beats me? It was clearly an act. Looked away. Man, this guy was honest. I like it. There's nothing special about you, huh? Yeah. I see. Well, you should stop going around at night and disturbing the peace like that. I'd appreciate an apology for treating me with so much suspicion, but I have more important things to talk about. Anyway, would you mind if I spent a night here and... Alright, I'll show you the way to the road. Huh? But I'm so tired. If you could complain, you'll be just fine. Dude, he's not... My fuel's running low. I'll give you from, from, some for my scooter. Dude, I can't even... There's no hotel here? Ugh, I don't feel so good. Then you should hurry and go. Is there something going on here? Nope. Was even looking into my eyes as he said that. He got on a scooter and saw me off until the crossroads. Man, what a great guy. Didn't expect him to go this far. Yeah, right. Why the hell did he want me out so badly? Well, at least the rain stopped. This is the only good thing about this. Was this some special time of the year when the presence of outsiders was bad? Was it worth chasing me out even if it seemed unnatural? It seemed like a decent guess. Even if the mess hadn't showed up for decades now, the legends were deeply rooted in local culture. There would still be traditions alive. Maybe. He was sure something bad was going to happen. Or was he on the side that that make it happen? Interesting. Did they have a means to create such a dense mist? Mist happened when the air cooled and the water vapor in the air couldn't stay gases. It was basically small water droplets. The mechanism by which they work could easily be replicated in a lab. They even did it on educational TV. Yeah, but they can't. They wouldn't be able to do that with a, in a small town. But I found it hard to believe they could reproduce it to a scale vast enough to hide an entire settlement. They need some device that no doubt be large and heavy, and it'd have to be the Saranaga Rapids of all places. Though I'd only been to Saranaga when I couldn't see anything either because it was at night or misty. If the mist was made by some huge machine to put there by Kamafujiyoshi people, I'd be really pissed, to say the least. Though Takami did say they had to pick up corpses from Saranaga. If it was forbidden ground, it wasn't likely they could just install a device like there without anyone noticing. That was how it was some novel, wasn't it? The corpses were there to begin with, but they just couldn't perceive it? I'd like to believe in something a tad more realistic. In the end, I had to keep going towards the area called Kachahara. Maybe I'd get to rest there. If I returned the next day, the cop would surely snap at me. Would I even go back? The fatigue was getting the better of me. I knew it was a good idea to stop, but no, I actually don't know it. I wasn't able to think straight. Up oh, here we go. Missed? Now? 
Was it artificial? No, that didn't make sense. My mind was hazy, and I could no longer make sense of anything. Dead again. We are not doing good. There's the key, nice officer. Game over. Bad ending number eight. Don't need that in corner yet. Guess it was just a dream, right? Do better next time. One sheep, two sheep. All right. Well, now that we got that key, let's see what we can unlock. We got all of this. Still need objective 20. I would need 3, 8, 19, and 20 for this one. Okay. That will be it, and everything else down here is essentially solved, so not going to... Not going to be able to do anything from here. Yeah. So, back to the, uh, back to infiltration, and, well, we unlocked the last one. So, eh, yeah, just snap. What's the worst that this cop's going to do? What's it to you, huh? Huh? This is Japan. We're free to go wherever. I can be wherever I want, wherever I da wherever I want. Damn it! The hell's up with you? I'm tired of dying. Damn it! I know I come back, but dying really hurts. Damn punk! I know this runs a dead end too. What's next then? You want me to dance naked? Some taste you got there, God? <laughs> I dare you to do it, you shit! Just shut up and let me stay here. Let me go to Yazumiza and make it look normal. Yeah, he went crazy. What the hell? Hello? Hello? All right, I'll shoot him. Damn. Shot my ass. <laughs> I snapped at God and he shot me. Key number seven, Berserk. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely dead on that one. No. We don't need to hint. Don't need to snap at the guard. But yeah, that is tragic. We're just getting all the keys now. So, infiltrating is not going to happen here. So, entering the village. End of the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Interesting. Drink booze from Kavi I'm going to be drunk driving, really? That's how I'm going to get through? Okay. Don't ever do this. I stopped my bike. I flipped out the kickstand and locked it in place. After opening the toolbox under the seat, I hid my license, ID, and business card. Anything related to me, basically, inside it. Kama Fujiyoshi was just ahead. If I came in like that, the officer would surely catch me and then chase me away. I'd find another way to convince that old man to let me stay. I reached into the bag of stuff I brought to the convenience store and took something out. It was a cup of refined sake. Quickly gulped it down. Ugh, it's so bad. Cheap or not, just choking sake like this is plain disrespectful. No trying this at home, kids. Now the kids could drink anyway. Fortunately, my life is fading whatever we're on the line here. Next cup. Third cup. Four. Uh -huh. Huh? <laughs> the hell are you? A drunk? Never seen you here before. Yep. Yep. Whoa, you reek. Where are you from? Why are you out so late? Yep. Alright, alright. Just come with me. Yeah, I realized this. This man always <laughs> let me go as long as I was good for drive driving. Then it was best to just not talk at all and come all drunk. Yeah. yeah. 
Wahoo! Wahoo! Shut up, dumbass. You're disturbing the neighbors. He's gonna put me in the drug tank. I guess that's one way in. <laughs> Ugh. Where was I? Ah, my head. Back. I heard all over. Tattooed me in a blanket, so he really let me spend the night here, just as I planned. Officer was actually a nice guy. Not like I couldn't tell, he was just rough and simple. Basically, the way you get around him was to get him to think there was nothing more to me than met, than met the eye. Oh, you awake? Let's talk for a bit. Alright, it was time. So let me get this straight. You got no money, can't find a job, got chased from your apartment, left by your girl, and your parents are already gone. You came to the mountains to drink yourself stupid and die, but couldn't finish the job, huh? Yes. Tokyo is hell, isn't it? Yes. After I spent an hour lying about myself, the officer looked at me with a sympathetic expression. If you ask me, you should have tried to look more proper than that. Yes, I'll think about it. Basically, I didn't talk unless prompted, nor did I argue with him. This guy was definitely good-natured, but he also, but he was also rough around the edges. Chatty, and a bit preachy in this case. I just kind of let him set the pace. I was about to ask him something outrageous, after all. I needed to be completely on board with this story. The front door is made of glass, and when people pass me on the farm road in front, they all gave me funny looks. It was early morning, but the people of Kung Fujiyoshi were already aware and concerned about my presence, an outsider. Well, dying ain't good. Yes, I was too scared to die even when drunk. Didn't seem that way. Sometimes you're so scared you can't help but laugh. Huh, that's so. Well, what do you want to do now? I paused to make it seem like I was hesitating. I want to make a fresh start, but I have nowhere to go. Make some tears and quivered as I spoke. My wife's from Miyaz Miyazaki. They got a small workshop there. Want to give that a try? Huh? Your wife's from Kyushu? Yeah, she's a tough woman. How'd you meet her? Well, when I was still 20. And so, he began his grand his grandwa hour-long talk about his youthful romance. The words karma and a cursed rebound came to mind. Apparently, he was a Fujiyoshi inhabitant at the start. He and his wife were only living here at the sticks because he was the local officer. It was then that his wife, Plum and Pleasant One, came out and served as tea, so they really were living here. Eventually, they got so lovey-dovey it was hard for me to talk. I instead considered what to do next. I mean, this made it really hard for me to say I wanted to make a fresh start here in Fujiyoshi. Even his wife suggested I went to, I went to work for her family back in Kyushu. Such nice people. Exactly the type that would get swindled. Sounds great, but this place is nice too, isn't it? There's lots of nature. I think I could take it easy here. Oh, but it's so inconvenient. It's all surrounded by mountains. I have a feeling like I was brought here for a purpose, like maybe I meet someone. Well, you did. You met us, didn't you? Damn, she was a tough one. This is the first time anyone has been so nice to me. Oh dear, please don't cry. I want to pay you back. Can I work somewhere in this village? Uh. Got to the heart of the matter, but the guy didn't look enthusiastic. His wife left the room, leaving behind the two of us in awkward silence. I don't think you should. Huh? I mean, this place is full of old people, and it's not like we have any local exports or anything. The most you expect is odd jobs, but that's good enough for me. I don't even need any money. It's great and all, but there's a town not too far from here. I'd like to work here. Well, uh, how do I put it? The people here are a bit strange, you see? He went and said it. Listening to a story made me guess that he wasn't under Fujiyoshi's sway to the degree others were. They lived here for 20 years, but in some small ways they were still outsiders. The bitterness in his expression were more than enough to give me that impression. Strange. Uh, forget I said that. Anyway, don't take this the wrong way, but you should find some other... Suddenly I heard a sound coming from the outside. 
It was a town broadcast. Some speakers somewhere in the village were playing some unclear music, and it was... It's that music that they were singing. Oh, that surprised you? It's a sign that it's 7 o'clock. I heard this music in Yasumitsu. It was both a children's song and a playground singing game. Chami said it was called Prayer to Shanai. So it was a song revering the great Lord Shanai? But from what I remembered, it was about the Feast of the Omi Purge. It's a strange melody. I uh, forget what it's called. It's been around for generations. So the village was all, as a whole had inherited it. Was anything strange about all that, really? Even if its roots were in a cruel legend, the passage of time would eventually erode said legend's significance. Just introduce something like a wolf bullying festival, and it would be nothing more than a decent song to serve as a morning alarm for the villagers. That was only true if the legends being had been forgotten. And it hasn't. What happened next was shocking, even to someone who had their suspicions about the nature of this place. One by one, people started coming out of their homes, for forming a crowd. The road before the office was full of people traveling from right to left. Where did this many people even come from? Couldn't get any good looks at their expressions, but they were all hanging their heads despondently. Are they just tired? What's going on? They're going to the watering hole. Watering hole? The eatery. Everyone eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. That was it. That's a bit weird. Yeah, it's got something to do with there being a ban on using fire because it could burn the mountain. So the watering hole did it in secret. That's why everyone here eats at the watering hole instead of their homes. Meal times are dictated by the Higuchi, so... What about us? The door suddenly opened and heard a soft voice I didn't recognize. Surprised the officer and I turned around. It was a man in a suit, average build. His face was round and he looked a bit shy of middle age. It's nothing, Gucci-san. It turned out he was a member of one of the four head families here, the Higuchi. That was the family Kaori had married into, but when her husband, the family's head, died, she was sent to Yasumizu. That means this man was related to the Yasunaga and Yoshitsugu. Couldn't see resemblance. He was definitely intrigued, though. Fujiyoshi had a tradition of using the watering hole to feed themselves, and if the Higuchi family was in charge of it, that gave them an inf influential position. People needed food to stay alive. If they didn't have any way to cook, they wouldn't even consider making food for themselves. I can only imagine the power of a family could have if it was in charge of all the local food and drink. Kaori was in charge of the dining hall, too. Her relation to the Higuchi probably had something to do with that. Perhaps she'd been sent there to fill that role. But if that was the case, the idea that Ryazumisu would be completely abandoned wasn't true at all. It meant that Kemo Fujiyoshi was actually controlling what went on there. Everyone was talking about this person. Who is he? Uh, name's Fusaishi. Kid went through some bad stuff, wandered here, wanting to die. Hmm, that sounds quite awful. Higuchi gave me a genuinely sympathetic smile. No need for that. I think I wasn't in the right mind. Sorry for the bother. Well, that's all fine and good. I see. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Shoji Higuchi. I am in charge of the odd jobs around here. Ah, pleased to meet you. I am Haruaki Fusaishi. You're quite stylish. A hunk, as they say. I wouldn't say so. May I ask what you were talking about? We were about to eat. Can't you leave it for later? I forgot. You always make your own food. Oh, but... Have you had breakfast yet? Care to join us? My family runs an eatery. We can treat you. Might be a good chance to talk. Don't worry. Looking after F Fujiyoshi is part of my role. I'd like to know everything there is to know about what's happening here. He looked gentle and easy to get along with, but also like someone I had to watch my step around. He just walked right up to the local police officer asked him for information like it was a casual request. It's clear who was in charge here. I gave the officer a glance out of the corner of my eye, but he'd stop talking. I felt like the conversation I had with him could have led me into sharing breakfast with him and his wife. 
but he hadn't said anything about Shoji inviting me. It was like he was telling me to accept it. Or perhaps there was just no point in trying to refuse. May I? Even so, I did ask for his permission. Can I have him after breakfast? Or after the officer? But the officer didn't even want to talk to me anymore. There's still some things I'd like to ask him. Perhaps Fujiyoshi was a place where, in his presence, you couldn't even have a conversation without him involved. Yes, yes, of course. Anyways, it was decided. The sky was clear. Eateru was split into several buildings around the village. From what Higuchi had told me, Fujiyoshi had a population of about a thousand people. It was pretty small for an autonomous area, but it was still enough to make eating in one building impossible. We went into one of them. It was crowded, but seeing us, the, the villagers stepped aside as if it was all planned. Apparently everyone here did what they could to accommodate Higuchi. Also, everyone was staring at me like I was an alien or something, but it felt like Higuchi's presence discouraged them from staring too long. That attitude aside, everyone here looked pretty normal. The usual Japanese people, lethargy from before was nowhere to be seen. Maybe they just looked lethargic because it was early morning. Most looked like they were farmers, but I could also see some students in uniforms bearing the same design as the ones worn by the students in Yatsumizu. The building itself was an aged wooden structure, but it was a whole lot bigger than the one in Yasumizu. It looked way sturdier, too. The interior wasn't too pretty, but it was spacious. We grabbed a tray right after walking in, they got tea and rice bowls or whatever from the ladies in aprons. It felt like a high school cafeteria, but you couldn't choose what you wanted. You could refuse what you didn't want, though. Oh, I'll look after him, don't worry. He spoke to the elderly woman one after another and made them stop staring at me with suspicion. Then we took our trays, and without paying anything, apparently they had something like union dues for that. How effective. Walked away. Parting the crowd, we searched for a place to sit down. Bit cramped here, but please do eat. Really appreciated getting to eat a normal meal. Lots of rice, miso soup, the ones with vegetables and boiled beans. Thought it was a, I, it was vegetarian at first, but then felt something meaty inside. It's shishi. Not used to it? It doesn't taste strange, does it? Shishi, like, you know shishi? Boar? Not specifically. In here, deer, boar, all wild meat is called shishi. Oh yeah, I heard that shishi once used to be the Japanese reading for meat before it became niku. Surprised you know that. The people of this area have been hunting for a long time, and even now, the hunters share what they catch, like they did with this. I had thought I'd ever eat wild game with some communal eatery. Look at me. Well, the taste was kind of bland overall. I could detect some soy sauce with vegetables, while the boiled beans were kind of sweet. Soup stock, too, made me think they used a minimal amount of flavoring. The miso soup didn't really seem like miso soup. It was more like a stew. Probably because shishi was the only thing they used for the stock. Tasted more of it and realized that the overboiled meat still had a sort of beastly texture and smell about it. Couldn't call it good, but it was a unique local meal not everyone had the chance to eat. I was grateful for the experience. The eatery was so crowded as people came in and went, but Higuchi didn't seem bothered as we talked. I kept up with him during the conversation, repeating the same lies I told to the officer, making sure to look as much a poor and fortunate soul as I could. He smiled all the way through, even as he interjected now and again. Felt like he was at least a hundred times crafter than the officer. I wonder if it was my inner contrarian speaking. After that, Higuchi and I returned to the officer's post, but... What did you say to Fusaishi saw moving to Fujiyoshi? What would you say to Fusaishi moving to Fujiyoshi? It was what I wanted to hear, but couldn't let it show on my face. While the officer was against it, he didn't tend to argue too strongly. He and Higuchi discussed some things, but it seemed like Higuchi already knew how he'd treat me. It didn't look like the officers take matter to him. After a few exchanges, the officer caved and it was my turn to speak. You're okay with us too, aren't you, Fu Fusaishi? Now that was a smile I couldn't say no to, even if I wanted to. Well, it didn't really seem like the heads of Kevin Fujiyoshi were a twisted bunch. It really did. Yes, this opportunity is a godsend for me. You can sell in right away. 
But it's going to be a place a short distance from here. Was he serious? I don't mind. What kind of place is it? I tell you more in a moment. Oh, that reminds me. We have some people already headed there. Those two, huh? We'll ask them to take you there. There was no mistaking it. He smiled like he was harmless while forcing me into the settlement for the ostracized. So, do I have to sign anything? We can take care of that later. I know someone in Tokyo. He could act as a proxy for that. Anyway, we must start with your place of residence. You'd be a bother if you stay in the officer's post, after all. I'll talk to the ones going there. Don't worry. They're from the city, too. Oh, I'll have to tell the locals about you, too. I'll be quite busy, but I'm sure I can get all, done, all that done by lunch. Anyway, goodbye for now. Well, that worked. He one-sidedly ended the conversation and left the post. But he definitely has motives. Nice guy. On the surface, anyway. Hmm, yeah. The officer understood the situation didn't like it, but couldn't go against one of the heads. It's probably why Chimmy said we couldn't trust the police. I mean, it's only one guy, and yeah. He bows down to the heads of the families. Because they have all the power in this small town. Ian Fujiyoshi, even government institutions were only secondary authority. Anyway, what could I make of this? I did actually expect to be sent to Yazumizu. The people here had no interest in harboring outsiders. We weren't welcome. Or maybe they wanted to avoid the initial trouble caused by my immigration by making me live in the ostracized until I got used to the village. Whatever the case, this wasn't something I had to say, which made it seem really bad. It was probably why the officer was so against it. I could understand that. Higuchi, on the other hand, seemed a bit heavy-handed with all this. I could understand him wanting to set me up with a place quickly. But as someone who knew about the feast, I couldn't help but be suspicious of the timing. The mist would come this evening, and he wanted to give Yasumisa a new inhabitant until then. Probably because they needed this many people to kickstart everything. That might be the truth. Did Higuchi, ahead of Kama Fujiyoshi, understand what that meant? Oh well. Have you ever have you ever read Kyuku Hausei's articles? Sorry. Went through a highly familiar exchange to finish my introduction to Sako a second time. And you die. Nice to see you guys alive. Hello, nice to meet you. No. Oh. It was as hard to deal with as always. Man, a few words. Higuchi worked fast. Thorough, too. He got him back to me before noon. Before I knew I was greeting the ones who let me who lead me to my place. Just as I expected, they were the journalists. Higuchi said he already contacted the people he has to visit. What about you? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm more worried about you, in fact. Oh, you're all right. Oh, we're all right. If we could get there at noon, we won't have to stay hungry for long. I see, so you intend to come later for their for their convenience. Yes, he said we should avoid coming when the people were there are eating. Honestly, I wanted to cover their eating environment, so this is a bit of a stroke of luck. Oh, so this probably also has something to do with the people of Fujiyoshi not wanting to show their daily lives to outsiders. Could just refuse them completely, though. The journalists have connections that made them impossible to refuse? Or did they want to show what a developed settlement it was? Or maybe they had no intention of letting them go. I mean, I'm for that last one right there. That's 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 like hitting the nail on the head. Unlikely, no, but possible. If they killed anyone from Yazumisa or some nobody like me, they could easily conceal it due to how isolated their location was. But the two journalists had come here to make an article... If something were to happen to them, it'd be certain to draw unwanted attention to the village. On the other hand, if Kamu Fujiyoshi's people knew that the feast was near, they probably wouldn't have allowed them here. I think we should head over now. What do you think, Hashimoto? Fine. Well, he was slow, but he actually communicated with someone. That was rare. Sorry for the bother. Thank you for having me. No worries. It was the first exchange I shared with him. In this life, anyway. Now, of course. Now, get in. The van started slowly traveling down the thin paved road between the farms. Kind of think of it, May was rice planting season. The field had water all over it and didn't display a single weed. It was full of people playing rice seedlings by hand. They're not using machines. 
Looks like it. The people here don't seem to like modern technology. Combines or tractors aren't that new if you ask me. I'm impressed they're doing such a good job by hand. Not sure they are. That's why the big families here are trying to get heavy machinery for the job. I see, like Higuchi? I heard that the Migurama were in charge of farming developments. I see, so they have money, huh? Uh, seems so. Not sure quite how not quite sure how that works. Something has to work here. Hmm. Well, how do I put this? What I mean to say is the big families are strangely rich for a mountain village with an aging populace with a young go to work outside. Really? Yes. The bigger room of the house is fairly big. They even had a large foreign car. Hmm. Yeah, if it was something that could easily be explained, it was still something to keep in mind. Okay, John. Yeah? The strange nickname Hashimoto used to surprise me, but Mamiya-san herself didn't seem bothered. Shouldn't make too many assumptions. Mm, but, the journalist with, within you is curious? It's nothing that big. I think you should just leave it at that. Is that your famous photographer intuition talking? Who knows? Well, alright, this is my specialty anyway. Anyway, forget what I said. Yes. Nope. By the way, I heard you're moving here. That's how it turned out. Have you heard about the place you're going to? I didn't, but I can imagine what it's like. My words made her give me a strange look. As then? Probably isn't a good place to live in. It being separate from the main settlement and all. Why do you think that? Few people look comfortable about how I'd be treated. While Higuchi looked less like a nice guy, more like someone who could easily shrug off any guilt, his actions were causing. See. Don't mind me, though. I'm satisfied with where I'm going. Maybe I shouldn't say anything, but it's really it's a really isolated place. I don't know if like, the countryside is enough to bear it. Don't worry. Comparing to dying, any place is heaven. Wait, that must sound strange. <laughs> what an awkward laugh. Apparently they've been told I'd almost committed suicide. Curious though, what kind of place is this? It's special. Yeah. She tried choosing her words carefully, but that made it sound worse than just a place for the ostracized. Hashimoto seemed to be warning her, but she continued talking anyway. I still don't know much, but it's full of people who are unfairly forced to live there. Both the place and the people living there are regarded highly here in Kevin Fujiyoshi. Think before you go leak at information. I pick and choose what I'm saying this to. This is something a person who's moving here should know. It's only fair. Fair is fair. There's something you should say before that, though. Right. Sorry, Fusaishi. Please keep this off the record. Sure, won't say a word to the people here. With that in mind, are you sure? You can still go back with us if you change your mind after seeing it. You wouldn't mind, would you, Hashimoto? I'll think about it if that's what he wants. Fusaishi, do you want to leave with us? You two had an interesting relationship. Mamiya did all the talking, but Hashimoto seemed to outrank her. Hell, he didn't speak much. Everything he said was really well constructed. Made sense, so to speak. Well, Mamiya-san often became overly excited. Hashimoto was strangely stable, not just in terms of appearance. Wait, there was no time to scrutinize my traveling companions. No, I don't feel like going back to the city anymore. Thank you for the consideration, though. But... Mamiya... You're probably saying this is a fellow city dweller, but you do realize I'm a pretty shady character, right? I'm just grateful for your help. That's more than enough. I see that I won't say anything more. Haraki, was it? Yeah. You really don't look like a guy at the end of his rope. Get that a lot. Must be my carefree attitude. I see. I'm sorry. You know, one of my classmates in middle school committed suicide. He was always so carefree that we couldn't believe he'd done something like that. Guess that's the way it is sometimes. I might have said too much. Recalling the scene at the officer's post, I tried to get back in the character of the poor suicidal man. The van slowly ambled onward. 
We approached a slightly more open space that seemed like the center of the village. It looked like there were small shops there. But as we went out, it started becoming more desolate, and you could see more and more trees growing between the buildings. If that was where Kevin Fujiyoshi ended, it was only about three kilometers across. If it was about ten square kilometers in size, I had a hundred people for every one of them. The stones I had seen by Yasumizu were nowhere in sight. Apparently, they really were Yasumizu exclusive. I see a larger building nearby, and Mamiya-san told me that it was the branch school from some nearby town. All students of Fujiyoshi must get their education before moving on to help with the fields. The smarter ones left to work outside the village upon graduating. Those who went here for college were rare, meaning that at least relative to the locals, Jimmy was a prodigy. Students from Yasumizu should have been in school this time of day. Once we passed the last residence, we entered the area mostly untouched by human hands. The road led us to the overground mountains. That's... There were large stones on each side of the road. Impressive, huh? They're like Tories. Tories? Yeah, trees inhabited by birds serving the gods are a gateway through a sacred boundary. Fujiyoshi worships the mountain, apparently. Oh, Great Lord Shanai. You know about it. Crap. Um, Higuchi's uh, told me a few things. Um, anyway, you don't really hear that this mountain is special outside this village, do you? Never even heard of the god Shanai. Going by the kanji, it sounds like a monkey god of some sort, but that one is only used in calendars and directions. What are your articles about food? Oh, sorry, I used to write about the occult. Quickly switch topics because it wasn't keeping food on the table. She looked like your typical neat and fashionable career woman, so this is really unexpected. Really, it sounds interesting, though. In this day and age, anyone who wants to read that kind of stuff just uses the internet. Everything in magazines is a lie, and all the real cold info is on the net. That's the general opinion of people in the cult these days. The piece of the pie that's still around was taken by the leading writers. We newbies don't stand a chance. Now that she mentioned it, I hadn't seen as many magazines on the occult and the supernatural these days. No idea if that was a good thing, though. Car passed a large boulder. The road's about to get bumpy, be careful. Alright. When we said that, the car jumped, scaring the crap out of me. If those stones were the mountain's boundary, we're now on Great Lord Shania's turf. Beyond that, we'd find Yazumizu and Serenega. The entrance to Yomi was beyond the sacred agenda. This religion just kept getting weirder and weirder. Eventually, the pavement ended as we were on Gravel Road. The grove of trees became a dark forest. It was cloudy, so there wasn't much light to begin with, with which only made this place extra creepy. I composed myself. After all, the real creepiness was at the end of this road. We weren't saying a word anymore, I thought about mundane stuff like the convenience of cars. We went down to the side of the mountain for about 20 minutes and eventually made it through God's Narrow Road. Beyond the dense forest, there was relatively open space. We arrived at the entrance as I passed when Haruchan escaped the settlement. I searched for her. There were the same two large stones, and they really did a great job telling me that this was some sort of boundary. We're close. Felt like I heard a head of nervousness in our town. We were about to enter a strange realm. Or were we already there? No point in thinking about it now. We just passed the gate, and... She was. I stared, careful not to lose sight of her. Our eyes met. A mysterious red stare, white hair trailing behind her. She looked at the van as we passed. And she fell. Ah! She hit the stone. She heard out of the stone and saw writhing in pain. Hey, please, stop the van. What? So as it was, Hashimoto stopped the van, jumped out and ran to her. You klutz. Are you alright? She was still writhing on the ground with her hands on her head. There was no trace of the divinity and mystery from the last time or from just a moment ago. 
It hurts. I can tell. Uh, who are you? Just a passerby. Who am I? Hold on. Barely wanted to say that. Oh, so I feel up to joking around at least, huh? Pay made me lose my composure for a moment. The girl, or rather woman, since she was older than me, became red as a tomato right before my eyes. Rikako. Was she an albino? Her skin and hair were pale, her eyes were blood red. Her unusual appearance and manner of speech were exactly as I remembered. But man, where did this playfulness come from? Well, I hadn't spoken to her much since last time, so maybe I didn't know her as well as I thought I did. Are you okay? Be honest. My late mother said that pain is proof that you are well. Hey, that depends on the situation. Excuse me. Slightly hesitant, I reached out for her head, gently touched, and examined the damage. Ow. Ah, you're bleeding a bit. That's gonna leave a bump. You should take it easy for a while. Are you a doctor? Now, this sort of thing is common knowledge. From the look of the wound, it isn't that bad, is it? Hey, uh, you okay? Yes, but having my hair touch like that makes me feel a bit odd. I rather like the feeling, but I'm uncertain how I should respond. Was the skin on her head sensitive or something? Oh my god, you're not making this any better, Hisako. Physical intimacy with the first villager you meet. Not bad, Fusayushi. What are you saying? Oh, Ty. Ah! A brown-haired man is trying to take Uibatsu. Ah, nowhere came the old lady. No, I'm not. Listen up. I mean, lady... We bought some here, slipped and hit her head, and so I just. What horrible things does Hulum do to you, Imatsu? How awful. She wasn't listening at all. Jesus Christ. Feel a bit stupid for worrying so much about her. I explained what happened and cleared up the misunderstanding. My apologies for the trouble. The ones to blame are the ones who misunderstood. Eh, uh, sorry. Now, Uematsu, you should come and rest at home. No need to worry about me, Yamawaki. Nosato is in Yam Yazuizu right now. I'll call him. We can take it. Yes, please do. Now, this was unusual. She hated outsiders, but she couldn't say no to Hashimoto's presence. Uematsu, was it? Are you sure you don't have to go to the hospital? We have a doctor here. Really? That's good then. We'll give you a hand. Want to get on? Apologies for the trouble. Sorry, Pusayushi. You're stuck in the back. Full of equipment, though. I can walk. Don't. Damn. I have been taking nonchalantly, but her response was a stern one. Well, it was true. I could have caused some serious trouble if I arrived completely alone. I knew this from my experience arriving via Saranaga. Also, I wasn't supposed to be familiar with the area. I had to avoid looking suspicious. My apologies, um... It's fine, don't worry about it. No, I mean... I am Rikako. Rikako is a plum flower, and Uematsu is spin and end. Alright, we have properly introduced ourselves, um... Araki Fusaishi. Felt like she didn't get it all. Anyway, thanks to that, I became an inhabitant of the backseat and a fellow passenger along Rokako. For a brief moment, anyway, we didn't speak much. The only noteworthy thing was the strange smell of dried aromatic wood she'd brought along. Besides that, I was just struggling to keep my seat as we jostled down the bumpy road. Leaving a trail on the unpaved road, we arrived and drove through Yasumizu. Passed through the front of Nosato Mansion. Then the construction site. Tai-san's house. Till finally we arrived at the plaza. By the time we got there, Uibatsu seemed to be the perfect health and apologized profusely for the trouble she'd caused, though it would be best if she took care of the wound on her head. Mia, son, and I went alongside her and took her to the house she was living in. It was the same place where she lost her mind and the rest of us had barricaded her in. 
Now then, I shall wait for Nosato just in case. Take care. Yes, Fusayishi, I will surely make it up to you. Oh, don't worry about that. Eh? Oh, I completely forgot about Uematsu's extra. Oh, who is this girl? You did not see her yesterday? She wanted to have some Mizu two days ago. Oh, from Kama Fujiyoshi? I can drive her back if you want. No, she... I want to ask someone else. Rikako-san needs rest. Oh. You have a point. Then we'll be leaving now. What about this girl? Mako. We Matsu called to Mako and brought her inside. A stronger smell began wafting from the building. Maybe they were burning incense. She's cute, isn't she? Yeah. Her attire combined with her appearance makes her look just mystifying. Attire? You didn't notice? While it's in the style of a Shinto shrine made in uniform, the dark coloration is clearly Buddhism influenced. It's clearly religious garb. I've never expected a place so remote to have its own religion. How exciting. It's good to be enthusiastic about your work, but there are limits to how far you should pry, don't you think? Man, everyone seemed to disappear out of nowhere this time. Um, Nosato, I'm sorry, are you here to treat Uematsu? Mamiya gave a confident journalistic smile and spoke to Kiyonosuke. Yes, if you're aware of that, the police clearly are the way. And who is this man? Um, he's Haraki. Higuchi sent him here to sent him to live here. Huh? Hello, I hope we get along. You're not from Fujiyoshi, are you? No, I'm not. Things happened, I left Tokyo and ended up here. What's Higuchi thinking? You have my sympathy, though. Anyway, I'm off. I'm coming in, Rikako. Sympathy, huh? It's condescending as always. After parting ways, we return to the plaza. Hashimoto was taking photos of a small flower nearby. You can imagine that someone told him not to take photos of the houses. We were the only ones here, and I couldn't hear anything but the wind. Strangely quiet. <clears throat> uh, like always, this place is... She fell silent before finishing derisive comment. Wise move. Derisive. Sorry. Would it be good to finish that comment by comparing the place to a ghost town? Let's go then. Go into the dining hall, right? Yes. Despite having next to nothing to do with me, Mamiya was helping me out a lot. Then again, she was heading there too. I've been waiting for you. You're Fusaishi-san, yes? And hello to you too, House san and Hashimoto. Hello? Hello, hello. Took a lot to keep myself from saying hello, hello, hello. Higuchi sent me here. Pleasure to meet you. Shoji Higuchi had pushed me into working at the dining hall here. Not the watering hole, but dining hall. He strongly emphasized that it wasn't under his control. That was why I had been decided I'd meet Kaori. Yeah, we're not going to let that happen again, I hope. She had an oval, composed, slightly haggard face. I couldn't see a hint of the demon from before. Apparently, if it was for the if it if it was for their children, some parents could become both demons and angels. Kind of felt that applied the entire history of mankind, for better or worse. My, you're well behaved for someone so young. Oh no, I'm just a failure. Oh come on now. But you're you sure you want to? You know. She still looks a little tired, even though she's not nearly as uh, stressed out as she was last life. It's fine, Might, many people say otherwise, but this is a nice place. It is, but I don't know if you've been told, but this dining hall is more like a ration distribution house. Hard for me to say, but you won't be paid. The most we can offer is meals. I don't mind. If I can live a simple life, I don't need money. Why? Huh. Where, are you, where are you? What are you? An old fart? Suddenly, Yoshi walked through the door, displaying the same recklessness that probably got him killed last time. Yoshi, why are you not in school? Shit, I said I ain't going. Hey, you fucking zombie. Heard you came here because you couldn't die. It's so lame. Yoshi, how dare you? Oh, word spread fast around here. 
Probably Colton told Kaori about it, then she told it to several other people and it probably leaked. Yeah, I'm so lame. The hell? You okay upstairs? Can't say I am. I'm an idiot. Hey, Hank, don't hire this guy. You mess up the place. I don't want to hear that for someone who doesn't go to school or help around. Shut up! Hey, you brown-haired dumbass. You seriously came here to die, or is that an act or something? Twitched. <laughs> as if. <laughs> hey, Hag, guy is weird as hell. My name isn't Hag. Um, I know I have nothing to do with this, but you should keep your joking around to a minimum. Sorry, I just felt like we'd be living together for a long while, so I thought I'd be as friendly as possible. Yoshi, was it? Want to make a bet? Kind of bet, you coward. Um, looked at my large bag and took something out. Specifically, a new pocket knife. Use this to cut off my pinky. Everyone instantly fell silent. I ignored them and continued. Come on. I put my hand down. I put the knife right here. The hell you say? I'm saying I'll let you shorten my finger as a sign of our friendship. I'm saying that's insane. Hell, that's something you'd do yourself. You're making me do this because you can't do this yourself, huh? You really are a coward, huh? Can't do it myself. I can do it myself. But this is a bet and test of courage. If you're going to call me a coward, you got to show you're not one yourself, right? Swing the knife down, you win. If I don't back out, I win. That means that if you cut off my finger, we both win. Then we'd be friends with no hassles involved. What do you think, Yoshi? Jesus Christ. I smile and point at the knife on the table with my finger. The hell are you talking about? You nuts? Pretty much all you're saying now, but yeah, I really am nuts. Or what? You prefer normal people. You who looks like Van gives no respect to his mother. I prefer weird people, you see. Show me how insane you can get. Damn, we're really playing mind games with them. <laughs> Man, this is just too much fun. Yoshi looked r about ready to shit his pants. But it was time to back off. Gotcha. What a shame, huh, Yoshi? Just kidding. Wouldn't do something that hurt that much. Well, if we can't get along now, we'll be friends eventually. You actually think that helps? Jokes aside, he was actually pretty sharp. He and his brother were nothing alike, but it wouldn't have been surprising if this had also... He also had a talent for seeing through people. He had Higuchi's blood in his veins, after all. Perhaps it was it was genetic. He left without saying another word. Kiori didn't even tell him to go to school. Sorry, that was weird, wasn't it? Ah, uh, no, my stupid son had it, Kevin. That shocked me a bit, though. You have nerve, don't you? No, I don't. I'm the one who called it off, so I lost. He probably would have done it if I kept pushing him. After all, he was the type to pick a fight with something inhuman and die. Yeah, true. Probably didn't want to draw blood from his mother. I think he's a good kid at heart. My words almost made Kaori smile, but... Oh, but I do feel embarrassed. He grew too big for me to handle, and now all I can do is scold him. She decided to keep up the act of a strict mother. Puberty and rebellion sure seem complicated. Busai, you should come here for a sec. Did just that. Are you actually one of those kind of people? Do they send someone after you? Would it be over if they caught you? <laughs> what? Huh? No, I suggested the figure thing for no real reason. Trust me, I won't trouble the people here. She's, a, she's asking if I, I, I'm actually uh, Yakuza. I hope so. She was actually suspicious. I had to act out a better normal person. This wasn't the time to mess around. Anyway, I'm here to help with anything. Use me however you like. Oh, very well. This was decided by those up there anyway. Before that, I wonder where you'll be staying. I kind of expected them to already be decided on that. I'm gonna go introduce myself to everyone. Who should I ask about that? The one in charge of land is Yam Yamawaki. The old lady from before? She lives in one of the houses we passed. Oh yeah, when Takumi gave me the key to my dorm room, he told me that he got it from the old lady. Was she the landlord? Yeah, some music. Maybe she's not too far, like visiting Guimatsu or something? Oh, did something happen? She fell on her head and... I left that talk to my man. Open the door so I can see the plaza. 
but by the time I realized that someone else was on the other side, it was fully open. Seeing the person's face almost made me say her name a surprise. Don't do it. Jimmy. I couldn't save her. Couldn't fulfill my promise. But we met again thanks to the strange looping phenomenon. Well, it was something to feel thankful about was another matter. Nice to meet you. Kept my surgery emotions under control and gave him an amicable smile. But, um, just as she made that simple sound, a lone tear ran down her cheek. Does she also remember? Oh, do I have something in my eye? Her voice was calm. But the first tear made way for many more and they were soon streaming from both eyes. But what, oh, Kaori, do you have a hand towel? Her reaction didn't seem to be anything more than confusion at her body going out of control. Dude, we need to actually talk to her. My, what's wrong? Here you go. I don't know, do you have tear gas here or something? Perhaps the sheer, the shin scenario I'm making for the journalist is rotten. Yeah, I don't mean that. What is it then? Menopause? Oh my god. Come on now, you're too young for that. Uh, sorry for acting weird. She wiped her tears. Her eyes didn't look good, but her voice was cheerful and carefree, just like in my memory. You're the person who suddenly ended up living here, right, mister? That was a word used on strangers. Why is she cried? Yes, am I that scary? No, no, no. You look perfectly fine. It's just, well, a mysterious event. Ah, my name is Chiemi. I'm a student back home for the time being. No, I'm poor first impression, but I hope we can get along. She bowed to me. She really didn't know who I was. You sure about that? Due to the looping phenomenon, dying had sent me back to the point when I was wandering around on my bike. It was like something actually happened. I had to accept it, but it was also completely unreasonable. I didn't have any good way to reasonably explain it. Was the looping centered around me? Was I really the one who had memories of last time? It wouldn't be strange for there to be someone else. My memories were fragmented right now, and I often remember things only when it counted. It could be that the others have forgotten almost everything, but still had certain fragments of their memories and feelings. I had to stop thinking about this. I couldn't have just asked her to consult me about the tragic end that hadn't even happened yet. I'd have been barking up the wrong tree. I'd have been barking up the wrong tree. If everything worked out, I hope I could get close to her again. Love that depended on death. Despair and the suspension bridge effects was better off staying in the realm of fiction where it belonged. We exchanged a few words, but I didn't have much time. I had to focus on getting a place to stay. Anyway, just like I said, I first went to Imatsu-san's house. Obviously, it didn't seem like there were many people inside. Hesitate for a moment, but end up knocking. What is that? That was Mako's voice. Could she even understand me? Yeah, I'm Fusaishi from before. <laughs> Fusaishi from before, son? No, I am Haruaki Fusaishi. Is the old lady there? No. Oh, so it's off the mark. Alright, see you then. Oh, what? Fusai... Fusaiki... Sayuki? Wrong. Please wait a moment. Oh, Uematsu? Show me a wait, so I did. Soon enough, the door opened. I apologize for the wait. How may I help you? I'm looking for Yamawaki. From how she acted, I thought she came to visit you. I hadn't seen her yet. Looks like it. I'll be going then. Oh, uh, what did you need her for? Well, I'm gonna live here now, but I still don't have a place. You will live here? Yes, and I need to talk about that. Well, what did she mean by this? But you cannot be without a place to stay. Yeah. Prepare for the feast when the evening mists arrive. That made me flinch. Did it show on my face? The people of Fujiyoshi believe that the mist is a no omen. If it comes, we must clean, clean our bodies, shut ourselves in, and go to sleep early. Cleanse. Shelter. Dream. That's an interesting tradition. That's what, what I would have thought if I didn't know about the tragedy. Um, this might be a bit presumptuous, but I know of one empty house. Huh? 
She told Micah to entertain herself and took a key from her house. Instead of telling me more about it, she insisted on going outside despite my polite protests. No choice but to follow after. Past the plaza went down the hill. She tripped two times. God damn it, girl. It hurts. Looks like it. I fall and hurt my head on the regular, so I'm used to pain. You really shouldn't walk around grass like this in that attire. This is an Uematsu duty. This? The spider are bedroom woman, woman servants. That was a new term. Bedroom woman servants. Woman are serving in the bedroom? And the spider was up one of the guardians of the great Lord Shanai. That reminds me, Chami had told me that Uematsu were the family of the spider. When the power of the Yomi rises from Serenaga, it's said to bring madness first and foremost. That was why the Uematsu of old had the role of protecting the dreams of the villagers. Hmm. Were they like night watchmen or something? It wouldn't have been weird for a police to force to still retain power in this day and age. But you fall all the time at night, so you walk around during the day instead, huh? <laughs> Hit the nail on the head. Was she alright? By the way, do all the heads of the village have roles like that? Yes, I'm surprised you noticed. I came here through Kevin Fujiyoshi and Higuchi, well, he looked pretty powerful. The Higuchi family are the monkey. Protectors of the watering hole's flame. There's that term again, watering hole. They used fire when it was not allowed, huh? Yes. We are told they claimed to run a watering hole, while in actuality they were teaching people to use fire. And they used this to gain influence as a source of everyone's food. What about osato sans family? They're the one they're the head's families too, aren't they? The Nosato or the Crow? The Eve Eaters. I have no idea what that means. They inspect if a corpse belonged to a Yombito or not. They performed autopsies? That didn't seem very important. They were actually the healers. They were the only ones who could use ac Aconite, also known as Wolfsbane. Nosato is the family that made medicine. Wolfsbane, the plant. There's Aconite in the food. Oh yeah, that was true. Well, an autopsy was a medical procedure. If they could use poisonous plants on top of it, they could have easily garnered lots of respect. Let's see, what was the last one? The Migaroma. Right, I had met a single person linked to that one. The snake are the tower lookouts. The Uematsu aren't the lookout family. That doesn't give me enough. Tower as a watchtower. So they're in charge of the military here. No. They used to build watchtowers and watch the stars. They made calendars, read the weather, and lead the local farms. That role made them respected, and they eventually became Shania Sama's priests. I see. We had our TV weather ladies now, but back in the day, astronomy and meteorology were linked to the divination. They may consider them special powers that let them protect the future. <laughs> And bring good things in general. Farming was the building block of civilization. Having it a, was a matter of life and death, so it was only natural for those who offered guidance in that field to become elders. Leaders, sorry. Thank you for telling me. This place is a rich history, huh? I think I could grow attached to it. I see. This is the first time we've heard such words spoken. Really? It's pretty interesting, though. Never explained this to someone born outside of Fujiyoshi. All right, she refused to go into detail last time. Infiltrating the village really was a good idea, huh? They're not as wary. Oh, look, we've gone all the way. Here it is. Yeah, it really did go all the way, huh? Sure takes a lot out of you. No, we're not doing anything strange. Her speech was still odd. What the hell was up with her imagination? She could send my verbal curveballs to another dimension. Anyway, there's a wooden house. Much like the ones near the plaza, except a bit more aged. Looked relatively stable, though. Most of Fujiyoshi, 
It's actually the private property of the Higuchi, the Nasato and the Uematsu. Fujiyoshi used to be owned by the Miragama alone, Miguruma alone. But now that extends to all the current heads are Miguruma. That was new to me. So you're saying this place belongs to you, Rikako? Huh? What? Oh, sorry for being so forward with you. No, I'm not mine, but yes, this land is mine. A person lived here until recently. So has he passed away or something? Yes, it was a peaceful death. Sounds like a real blessing here in Yasumizu. Does it bother you? It's clean inside. I'd have been lying if I said it wasn't bothered, but I chose to take a look. She hadn't been kidding. The inside was shabby and the wood was aged, but the floor was clean. I couldn't see much dust. The tattoo was new, too. Though that meant it had to be changed. That meant it had to be changed. But at least there wasn't some human-shaped mark on the floor. There was no furniture, but I could easily get a futon or something. What about the bath? I do not think this place receives gas. That's bad. What can I do with the mist gum? You wish to be able to cleanse? You merely have to fill that pail with well water and wipe yourself with it. That's enough? Yes, I hear it's rare to bathe in warm water in Fujiyoshi. Oh yeah, because only the watering hole can use fire. Yes. That made sense. Anyway, I was now ready. You sure I can use this house? Yes, that would make all the daily clean worth it. Huh? You clean this place yourself? Yes, because taking in the corruption is one of the Uematsu's roles. Also, keep myself occupied serves as a good distraction. Did something bad happen? She fell silent. Sorry, that was insensitive of me. No, it was not that something happened. I was afraid of what could happen. She looked at the mountain beyond the valley. No, it was the valley itself and the Saranaga Rapids at the bottom. Back to the heads. Did the Miguruma still predict the weather and stuff? Part of me thought it might be prying too deeply. During spring and autumn, they ask for abundant harvest, dance for them, and chant ritual prayers. I heard it was supposed to be based on what they did in the past. Thankfully, we had no major droughts or famines. Oh, so in a way, they have a perfect track record. Yamawaki knows this well. Might wish to ask her. She would be pleased to talk. Seemed true. Oh, sorry for taking up so much of your time, Uematsu. Thank you so much. I'll make it up to you. Oh, I, I really want to thank you for your help during my embarrassing accident. Was she basically blaming me here? Lots of things happened already, but I hope we do. We keep getting along well. If you think I can help, don't be afraid to ask. Who's Saishi? Oh, and Sama doesn't quite suit me. You can be more casual. You don't have to use such polite speech. Crap. Who's Saishi? I can't. I can't. I like to ask of you the same. Please help me whatever however you like. Was I actually raised some flags here? Was the game this easy these days? Did she seriously fall in love with her a bit of help after a head injury? Was it a soap opera or something? Well not that I was complaining. Then Rakako. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, this was something else. She was just especially vulnerable to men. As a family head, she was probably either revered from a distance or considered an enemy. Takumi did the latter. She probably never talked to someone who didn't care about those things. That actually made me kind of bad, feel kind of bad for her. Okay, okay. then let's call each other Uematsu-san and Fusaishi-san. Let's become good friends. Huh. Friends. Yes. I'd love that. In a part of the village with no one but us, we exchanged a deep bow. We Matsu sent the return, and I checked the house for any holes. It seemed fine on that front. No monsters could get inside. For now. Anyway, I had my place. Now I had to get one for Mamiya and Hashimoto. It's really going that route, huh? Tried to think of a way to encourage them to leave before the mist came, but all the things I could do think of seemed unnatural. 
That meant my only option was the opposite, convincing them there was no way to leave so they'd have to stay. Honestly, I did consider just letting them die. As long as I survived, I really didn't care if they did. God damn, man. What an asshole way of thinking. <laughs> it's like playing as the mayor. Doesn't matter if the rest of the village is dead, so long as I get the votes to hang the right people. But, that didn't sit right with me. I wasn't a good guy, but not doing whatever I could right now seemed careless. My ultimate goal was to escape the loops, but at the moment all I could really do was prevent the tragedy before me. I'd think of something else if it just didn't work out, but now I had no reason to abandon my humanity. That, that was why I returned to the plaza. It was really empty, and the two journalists were probably working. This is my chance. Approaching the left back wheel of Hashimoto's van. Reaching into my bag, I pulled out the hammer and nails I bought. Placed the tip of a nail against the tire and hammered it in. You could hear the sound of the air leaving. That had to be good enough. They did the same to the rear tire, as well as one of the front ones. There. After that, I added a random array of extra nails around those to make it look like a trap or something had been had been run over in the grass. They couldn't leave now. I already knew they didn't have anything that could fix the tires. They couldn't get in touch with a road service until after the mist passed. If someone from Kama Fujiyoshi came to pick them up they, and they left without their car, that would have been fine too. Now I expect anyone to come. Now I just had to convince them that they had to stay here. It was a really haphazard plan. It seemed like the locals trapped them on purpose. I'd have to think of something just to say about that. Anyway, I did what I could for them. Now I just had to wait at and... Who's Saishi? Whoa, whoa, whoa. My heart almost burst out of my chest. What's the matter, Rikako? Oh, that name again. Sorry, what's wrong with me, Matsusa? I'm hungry, so I came to eat. Oh, that, huh? Well, I was pretty hungry myself, too. Wait, there was something more important to worry about. Had she seen me? This is a large car. It is. What the hell was up with this pressure? Was this, um, Kama Fujiyoshi had superpower? Was she waiting for me to confess or something? I had no choice but to think up a new lie. Ah, but look at her red eyes. Maybe feel like she'd see through my bullshit I spun. Crap, maybe she should just come clean in. I'm hungry. Was she actually not thinking anything? Uh, what do you think I was doing here? Huh? Searching for wood lice? Did she think I was the oldest Maiko? No, look here, it's flat. Oh dear. See? It's got this inside. So long and thick. Look how deep this is. Oh dear, how forceful. Oh my god. The brown hair man is taking Uematsu Sama in broad daylight. God damn it, Rikako. God damn it, Ty. Man, what the hell was with their appearances this time around? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't lie. This conversation pretty messed up. It's an outrageous misunderstanding. I'll go call for the journalists. What? You gotta be kidding me. Hisaka was completely perplexed. Now this is troubling. Still couldn't read his expression, but I could totally sympathize with someone being basically stranded in a place like this. How unfortunate. They weren't suspicious of me, so I just acted like an innocent, sympathetic bystander. Oh, the heartache. We are supposed to head back tonight. What are we going to do? Do you have any plans? I'm fine, but what about you? My daughter's birthday is close. Oh, Nami. Oh, the heartache. I had no idea he had a daughter. Or was married, for that matter. The fact that it came as a surprise just made my pain worse. But I shouldn't feel guilty about this. If I just ignored him, they'd been torn apart by a monster. He's not wrong by that. Oh my, what do we do? Yasumita has no cars in the first place. Now Sato might have something useful. Those words may be twitch. These tires are special, so that would be difficult. We need to have, we do have a single spare, but... Contact road service. Orbe, may we use the phone? Yes, of course, right away. They all return to the dining hall. I had a bad I have a bad feeling about this. 
I was left alone with a peculiar du duo, but then we were joined by a muscly silhouette come from the fields. What are you doing, Oba-chan, Oimatsu, and who are you? This is Har Haruaki Fusaishi. She went out of her way to introduce me, though she still couldn't leave off the Sama. I'm moving here. I hope we get along. Oh, you're the guy, huh? I'm Takumi. A pleasure. You don't look like you're from Kamu Fujiyoshi. An outsider, then. That's rare. Sorry you ended up here. They really do have... They really had to do something about their habit of showing sympathy for anyone who came here. Yes, I came here from the city. Sorry I'm suspicious and flashy. I'll re-dye my hair. Uh, Alright. That'd be good. Well, she hates that sort of thing. I don't really care, though. I care more about something else. As in? If you're useful in the field. Unlike Kevin Fujiyoshi, Yasumizu doesn't abandon its people, but we don't have room for those who can't earn their keep. While mentioning Kevin Fujiyoshi, he glanced at Uematsu. But you look like you have the build for it. You can start by mowing the grass around the upper fields. Uh, but I was told to work at the dining hall. What? You're working with Kaori? Okay, Takumi is probably going to be my worst enemy here. Crap, I messed up. Takumi, you're a fine man. Just tell her how you feel. What do you mean? I'm not thinking anything that outrageous. But she supports two grown sons and feeds every one of the frail arms. I'm going to kill any guy that tries to take advantage of her. That was plenty outrageous. Hey, what did you do to take, to get her to take you? Spill it. Took a lot of effort to keep myself from lying and feeling the fire. Oh, Higuchi from Kevin Fujiyoshi, right? He sent me to work. He sent me to work with her. Takumi became apathetic. Guess that's fine then. Uh, I'll try to become able to work outside too. It's great and all, but for now, just watch. We made you do too much that might get up on our cases about it. Huh? They care about what kind of work people do here? They don't. They just want to be sure we listen to them. So what are y'all up to? Where's Kaori? The journalist's car broke, so she went to make a call. Huh? That's pretty bad. Can they leave? It's best to assume they won't have it fixed today. Awful. This is getting nowhere. Do you have any open rooms? That house was the only one I could give. Wait, Matsu, you gave Jen's house to him? Yes, houses die if people do not live in them. Take care of that house, will ya? A good person used to live there. Of course. Don't you dare use that as the place where you take advantage of Uibatsu. That cannot happen to her, understand? Oh, jeez, right in front of her. Uh, what? You two are like that? Uh, it's a complete misunderstanding, but it seems to keep being taken as fact. I'd appreciate it if it wasn't. We went off on a tangent. What do we do? I'd have liked if, if I, the newbie, didn't have to be the one making this conversation progress. Hmm. I really don't think it's good if outsiders stay in Yasumizu. Neither side would like it. Bachan, you got any free houses? The one I gave to Mako was the last one. The rest had holes or didn't have walls. Can't even shelter in those. Liar. There was the room in the dorm. Um. Oh. You sure slept for long. Go help out the old man. Oh, sorry. I got the habit of sleeping in while I was away. By the way, Taibon, there's one free room in the dorm. She, you know the place was built by Yoshimu, Yoshimitsu. He worked hard to negotiate with the four families to get a belt. He said he wanted for at least the children to live in nice places closer to Kevin Fujiyoshi. That's why he had the concrete stairs belt on the hill and... Ah, she started talking about the past again. Well, Fusaishi, you see what kind of place Yasumizu is? I already knew. Anyway, I hope they can fix the car. This is bad. We only got one room. What I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to cut it right here.
I'm going to cut it right here for tonight because my throat is really killing me and I want to do a few more streams of just playing this game instead of jumping back onto Baldur's Gate 3 because I've been doing the multiplayer streaming and been doing this. I'll be back on Thursday. We'll do a longer stream then. I'll hopefully get my, uh, my throat will probably calm down by then. But, you know, nice hour 20 long stream of this game. It's really nice. So, I'm going to say uh, goodbye for now. And, uh, you know what, let's go, let's go see who's on right now. It's a little early, so let's see. Anybody? Not really. So, so that's fine. So I'm just going to end it for tonight. So until next time, this is Farmir signing out. Good night.